good morning. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dan. Maybe the way I would like to share with you my contribution on this national security strategy is to take a bit of a stock of what we discussed yesterday about the whole lot of effective leadership. And maybe we need to zoom in and then to ask ourselves a question when we say it's security for all Africans. Definitely such a goal cannot be achieved by attributes of individual leaders. And we may need to anchor it to the whole aspect of institutional leadership. Because often, when we talk about security, human security, is a security that should involve different agents and different parties. So we may need to get from these attributes to really the institutional leadership. And this will bring us to the issue of, uh, of the uh, of national security strategy and the, the whole lot of resource management, because these are the things that you can test the politi political rhetoric and to what level you can be committed yourself to achieve that goal of human security. But let me, it's very important also at the same time to highlight some of the issues that were raised by the general. One, the centrality of people. And I think because this is, this is the basis whether leadership or government is the centrality of people because we are talking about human security and people are the center of whatever we'll be talking about. The second one, the whole issues of trust. The debate today in Africa is about the relationship between citizens and the state and the whole lot of social contract. And to what level are we forging this relationship? And that relationship cannot be shaped except through strategies and policies, the right policies. Then the last one, the shared vision and objectives. And this brings us now to this issue of having a shared vision is so central and strategies. And uh, this is where I would like to start. I will try to just, I know the issue of strategy, all of you, you are aware. You are a resource of your own. It's just a method of sharing some of the experiences and then to shed light on some of the points. And, and at the same time, we want to be sure that the, uh, whatever we are saying here, we are not in any way at comparative advantage than you, but actually you have all the, uh, the knowledge and experience. So we'll be repeating certain issues that you may be familiar with, and, and forgive us for that one. I want to give you the formulation of national, secu national security strategy formulation, and I will use the case of my country, just an example of how a, a lack of leadership, institutional leadership, can result into a crisis of my country like South Sudan. And I will conclude with some issues of what is the way forward before uh, Dr. Raymond could come. Okay. Am I okay? Okay. <coughs> Now, let me start first with the strategy. I think all of you, you are aware the centrality of the strategy in any, in any leadership. This, this one is very familiar with most of you. The strategy, in most cases, has three or four components. Objectives, resources, and then the, uh, the concept itself. But the most important thing, risk itself, the threats. I think we have been talking, these are three components that you need to balance as a leader for you to achieve your objectives. It's a very fundamental, all of you, you are aware about it. But let me, let me go to this, the process of, the, uh, of uh, formulation of national security strategy. One, these are the six elements, the typical elements of any national security strategy. I know some of you, you have the white paper, secure sector reform paper, most of the, or national security strategy. 
most of these documents are either hidden or not shown, not shared, or some few countries manage to, to share the national security strategy. Maybe because of all your own good reason. We'll be discussing some of these issues about this confidentiality the, uh, and then the classification of this document called national security strategy. So in one way or another, you are aware about this national security strategy. But let me discuss, let us discuss some of these aspects and the elements of the national security strategy. The first element is the vision. The vision is so central and it's so linked to the, to the leadership. The problem with the vision is that a what type of vision and whose vision? I know many, many countries, including my country, we have very good visions. I think Africa is not lacking vision. But what is lacking is the way we formulate that vision. Is it a people-centered vision? Have we managed to consult with the people? That is, that is the real challenge for the vision. But it's a very important component, this issue of vision. As, as a very important in any national security. I will, I will try to define this national security policy and national security strategy. What I'm talking now, I'm talking about the elements of the national security policy. With the vision, that vision should guide the national interests of a country. These interests sometimes, they may be conflicting. But this is where we need to have a prioritization and engagement in order to see what are your strategic national interests. But before that one, the issue of values and beliefs are very important. Sometimes we tend to forget what led the country or nation to sustain itself is through its own values and traditions. When, when we are formulating these policies, we tend to forget the centrality and the essence of our national values and traditions. And we tend to look to the alien values, values that may not be consistent with our values. A national security policy, it should be anchored to the values, your own traditions and your own beliefs. Because these are the ones enduring you to exist as a country, as a nation. Then having that one now, you can have specific objectives. Still, I'm talking about national security policy. These objectives are, it must be quite specific and should be guiding the, uh, it should be incorporating your national security strategy. And then the national power in terms of means that you have, and then the strategic concept, uh, uh, that's the ways. This will provide you, it should make, you make assessment with the internal environment and the global environment, because these are very important ingredients to shape your policy uh, for national security strategy. And now you go for the resources, the, uh, the, the elements of power. This is now the national security strategy. After having, I mean, policy, after having this policy, now you have to come down for the implementation. Sometimes there's a confusion between a national security strategy is not a policy. Because a strategy is a way to implement that policy. But sometimes it is possible to have within a national security strategy, you can have a national security policy within the national security strategy. Sometimes we term them differently. It could be a national white paper, it could be but I just want you to be clear about this issue of the, the distinction between national security policy and national security strategy. Now, in formulating national security strategy, there are different ways of doing it. But let me share you with some of the things that you may need to, I mean some of the steps that you may need, three fundamental four steps that you need to, to take while you are formulating your national security policy. One, the initiation itself. 
who should initiate the debate around the national security policy, the formulation of national security policy? There are different approaches. Sometimes an office of the president could be the one initiating it. Uh, sometimes it could come from the executive. Uh, depending on the system of, of government, I mean, the, the way it is done, the, the choices. But then you have to agree on the scope of this national security policy. And, and, and also, there's a debate at this early stage of the initiation of national security policy, to what level will you be interested to involve the public? This will discuss it, remember what we said, security, human security, is security for all citizens. And imagine you now, you are developing national security strategy. Should you involve the public or should you make it inside? I know some of you, you have your own experience and I, I will, will share with you. After having this initiation, the second step is consultation and drafting. Definitely sometimes it's so difficult for such a thing to be, you may need to have first a discussion and then a possibility of having a drafting committee. A drafting committee that will be able to help in terms of putting all these, these things together. After the consultation, now you come to review and reconciliation. Because sometimes there could be a conflicting views within, within the year uh, in developing national security policy. And you may need to come up to, to identify some of the emerging uh, uh, goals. And this is where you can now constitute the drafting national security strategy uh, committee, policy committee. The final stage is approval and dissemination. In most cases, when you feel your national security policy, you present it to the executive, executive adopt it, and then to be forwarded to the national, I mean to the parliament. And in this process, you have a decision to make whether you should make it secret, classified, non-classified. These are some of the national decisions. <laughs> what I'm showing you here is the U.S. Uh, 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 framework. And they did a very interesting evaluation recently. Evaluation of the national security, the formulation of national security uh, strategy. The past and the way and the future. I want to share you some of, their, some of the feedback that came out from it. One, a very clear criticism. I'm just giving you one because it is not, it is not a perfect in, its, in terms of the year. First, there was a clear lack of a clear priorities. This is now the U.S. national security strategy. Second, a weak connection between objectives and resources. Third, there was a slowness in responding to changes in the security environment. I'm talking about the U.S. But what they found in the formulation of national security strategy, they, they said strategies are shaped by the processes. Because the process, the way you, the process of formulating your national security uh, policy, it determines the quality of your strategy. But there is no a fixed process that is perfect. It depends on your own, uh, your own context. I'm saying this one because it is very important that the context is specificity of your, there's nothing we can say, this is a national security strategy model that you can develop. It depends on your own context. So there's no, even the U.S. is still suffering, is struggling to improve its own national security strategy. Now, I have put some of the things here, but I don't want to bother you because you will get them. The whole lot of national security uh, vision and leadership, the national security and national interest, because these are very important things that you may need to, but you will, you will get this one. And then, then the, after having one is national security strategy. Now, the national security strategy is now, is a tool that you will use to implement the policy. But let me highlight some of the aspects of this national security strategy. First, it must be a practical document, a plan that describes how to implement national security policy. So it must be a practical, operational. Second, 
It answers some very basic questions about your formulation of security objectives, approaches, the one I discussed. But importantly, it reconciles between the objectives providing national security policy and, the, and all the instruments. These are the means. It should, it should, it should also include the, uh, sometimes, this is what I said, in national security strategy document can include the national security policy so that you can have one document in, uh, in, in national, it can be called national security strategy, but in actual fact is including the, uh, the national security policy. Now, just to put it in a very, the, uh, to put the strategy, it is really balancing some of these things. These are the choices that you have to make. Sometimes are not perfect. The, your adaptability and the way you adjust over time determines the quality of your strategy. Uh, I'm just putting that one to, is either you modify your aims, or you modify your means, or modify the ways, or you assess the risk. The whole lot of risk and threats to be assessed over time, it is quite critical in the national security uh, strategy. Now, coming to South Sudan. And I'm using the case of South Sudan, as you know, it is a country now in war. Um, is uh, to the disappointment of every, most of the country. I have never seen such a country so uh, blessed with support of international, regional community. What happened, it, it, it slided into, into civil war within less than two and a half years. Why? Because these are some of the things that we may need. South Sudan could be an example, just like any other country. You may you experience the same. I am, they developed their own national vision, 2040. But that vision contracted some experts to come and draft it for you. And then you say, this is a national vision. South Sudan is not unique. I know some of us here, <laughs> we might have contracted some experts to, to develop for us. So if you have a vision that is so alien, it's not homegrown, it's one of the problems. The second one, the national interest. Sometimes national interest, if you are not careful, you may not have a very long-term vision to it. South Sudan was having a problem of Sudan, Sudan, Muslim, Arabs, and then Christian, African in the South. The national interests and the national directives, direction was shaped by their anger towards Sudan. And if you shape your interest to one specific interest of fear, that become a problem. So what happened is that when, you, when, when they succeeded from Sudan, then they were left alone. And they did not look at some of the difficulties facing from within, within themselves. The other one, the political leadership and institutional leadership. And I want to raise this issue based on my own personal experience. It's what I call the curse of liberation. Most of the liberation movements, they tend to have a difficulty in adapting to governing. Because the liberation itself, when you are fighting a war and your mindset is based on a hierarchical command structure, that when you come to govern, becomes so difficult, especially when you have weak institutions. This is exactly what happened in the SVLM. As a political party, there was no process of democratization within the party and everything was lining up according to the military structure. And this is what I call the curse of liberation. It is that inflexibility, it is that militaristic structure that was brought to govern that resulted in the, uh, what I call the curse of, the, uh, of, of liberation. And then the whole other relationship between the state and the citizen. Sometimes when we are coming from the liberation struggle, we have the legitimacy. Nobody even to question us. People will be with us because we shed, shed blood and nobody will question us. So that the relationship between citizen and the state becomes very, very weak. And in most cases, the liberation movement, they tend not to perform very well in terms of creating a space for the citizen. And then the weak institutions, and what happened, South Sudan was depending on oil, 98%. Weak institutions, weak leadership, resulting in what I call the curse of oil. Oil by itself is not a problem. It is the way we manage and the institution that we have. And then the last one is the, uh, our traditional values, elite perspective. 
We always believe that our traditions are not good enough. Sometimes even you say, oh, you know, these, these people, you cannot discuss with them even security issues because it's too sophisticated. And these citizens will not understand. And we, at least, we, we assume a lot about ourselves and we can act on their behalf. We need not to, to consult them. These are some of the aspects resulted in the, uh, what I say, the, uh, the, uh, so what, what were the results? Very clear, maybe Raymond will be talking about these things later on. Look, the whole government was military. 50% uniform. A force that was only about 40,000 40, increased to, to 200,000. And this one was the expense of other resources, provision of services to the citizen. It wasn't sustainable. Just to give you an example, uh, yeah. it, uh, in, in terms of adductors per 100,000, you look at South Sudan, 1.5, Liberia, 7.5. But when you come to police, 450 per 100,000 in comparison to these 108,000. So everything was so uniform. And that one, it was very clear that the, uh, the fragility that facing South Sudan. And that's why we are in war. So let me conclude with some of these things about our national security strategy. And I'm looking at the issues of institutions. Our citizens today, they do fear security. Sometimes they run to the churches, to the mosque, rather than going to the police or the security. The feeling of insecurity is increasing over time. And this idea of security for all is so difficult for us to achieve. Sometimes people say, it, we created a state, a carbon, carbon copy state, because we imported some, some institutions, the best practices, and we put into our different context. So become a photocopy of some of these, the well to do the best practices. And that's a very big challenge to, to, to Africa. So we are stuck. Unless we revisit the way through this engagement, through this policies, formulation, and we think to ourselves, if we are going to be stuck forever. If we. And I'm bringing this one because sometimes we have these reforms the best practices, but they are not actually reducing, producing results. And this will help, I mean, we'll, we'll raise a question, what should we do? What should we do to ourselves? Maybe the way forward, especially for our national security strategy, is what is called problem-driven iterative adaptation. The idea is really, if, if, if our institutions are not functioning, are not delivering, can we take a stop and then to look to a local solution based on things that we have? And the idea of national security, have an objective that is very simple to the context and the resources that you have that you can be able to do. So I guess this idea of local solutions for our problem needed to be, to, to be emphasized. Then pushing uh, problem-driven positive uh, divines. Sometimes failure itself is so important to achieve success. You, 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 you commit mistakes based on your reality. It is through this committing these mistakes you will be learning in order to achieve success. And that's the idea of asking yourself, how can we achieve national security strategy? I mean, in, uh, security for all for Africans. The last one is from that experience of committing mistakes, correcting, using our own. I think we can be able to learn from it, and then we can be sustained. It. And then based on that experience, we can scale it up, and then we can be able to deliver. So let me stop here. It is really a challenge to what level can we be able to achieve security for all Africans, but importantly, through institutional leadership guided by a clear security policies and clear national security strategy. Thank you very much.